So you've learned how to code, maybe even built a few side projects, and now you're standing at the crossroads of every modern developer's existential crisis. Should you get a nice stable 9 to 5 job or throw yourself into the startup meat grinder and build your own thing? On one side, you've got a salaried position, benefits, maybe even a ping pong table. On the other, you've got freedom, control, and the thrilling possibility of becoming either the next unicorn founder or the next LinkedIn post about what I learned failing my third startup. It's the eternal tug of war between comfort and chaos. But before we start, please like this video and subscribe to become a fellow codehead. All right, back to the video. Let's set the stage. The tech industry romanticizes both options. You scroll through Twitter and see indie devs making five figures a month off a Chrome extension, and you think, hey, I could do that. Then you watch a YouTube video from a Google engineer talking about $200,000 salaries and free sushi in the break room and think, wait, I could just do that. Both look tempting, both come with trade-offs, and both are way less glamorous than they seem on the outside. So let's talk about the nine to five life first. It's stable. You show up, write code, attend meetings where someone talks about synergy, and then you log off. You don't have to think about where the money is coming from. You get health insurance, a team to back you up, and maybe even a little mentoring. You get to specialize and work on big problems without carrying the weight of the whole company on your back. You get paid on time, every month, regardless of how many users signed up that day. And honestly, that's a blessing. When prod goes down at 2 a.m. and you're not on call, someone else is getting paged while you're asleep dreaming of tailwind configs. But of course, the 9 to 5 route has its drawbacks. You don't control the vision. You might get stuck fixing someone else's mess for a year. Promotions can depend more on politics than performance. And there's always the possibility that after three years of writing Java code for the onboarding flow, your manager calls you into a meeting with HR and you're suddenly pursuing new opportunities. Also, your creative spark might slowly wither away under layers of JIRA tickets and OKRs. Now let's swing to the other extreme, starting your own thing. It's exhilarating. You pick the tech stack, set the vision, choose the features, and get full credit when something works. There's no bureaucracy, no meetings that should have been emails, and no PM breathing down your neck about user retention in Q2. You're free to chase your own ideas and potentially build something meaningful, maybe even profitable. And yes, if it pops off, the upside can be huge. You don't get stock options, you own the whole thing. But here's the thing, nobody puts in the indie dev highlight reel. It's hard, like deeply existentially hard. You're the dev, designer, support rep, social media manager, and sometimes the janitor. You launch your MVP and get three users, one of whom is your mom and the other two are bots. You spend a month adding features no one asked for, and another month trying to get someone, anyone, to pay. You'll learn more in six months than in three years at a big company, but you'll also age 10 years in the process. And unlike that sweet Google paycheck, the money doesn't just appear, you eat what you kill, and some months there's not much on the plate. So how do you choose? It honestly depends on what kind of chaos you prefer. If you value structure, mentorship, and a clear path, a company job might be your best bet. If you've got the itch to build, the stomach for risk, and the stamina to learn a dozen new skills on the fly. Maybe the startup grind is for you. You don't have to pick one forever. Plenty of devs bounce between the two. Startups fail, companies lay off, life happens. The only rule is to keep moving forward, and ideally, not burn out completely. If you're going the solo builder route, the hardest part isn't coding, it's getting users. That's where WAP comes in. It's the go-to platform for indie devs to actually get their tools seen and sold. As I said, if you want to build a SaaS or any other kind of tech product, getting users is the hardest part. You build something solid, then what? No distribution. That's where WAP comes in. Ooh, let me have some of that cool whip. What'd you say? WAP is a community platform where creators sell your app for you. You list your app on the WAP app stores. Creators install it into their WAP and promote it directly to their audience. One big creator can mean thousands of paying users instantly. WAP handles payments, authorization, and distribution all in one place. You build the product, creators bring the audience. Check it out at wap.com slash developers. Thank you for sitting through yet another tech rant, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow codehead.